Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Hobby Farm Guys. I'm Steve. And I'm Brian. And doing the heavy liftings behind the scenes is our friend Eric. Hey everyone. Today we're going to share some tips and tricks for knowing when and how to harvest those homegrown garden vegetables. Don't go away. Many people are surprised by how much better food grown in their own garden tastes than what they bring home from the grocery store. One reason for the difference is because most of the produce you find in the grocery store has been picked before fully ripening to allow time for shipping and to extend the shelf life of the produce. One of the many advantages to growing your own fruits and vegetables is you can harvest and enjoy them at the peak of flavor and nutrition. But to do that, you need to understand when that is. That can sometimes be tricky for beginning gardeners. Today we're going to talk about when and how to harvest your vegetables to ensure you get them at their peak. Now, keep in mind, most seed packets will list days to maturity. So if you keep track of when you plant your crops, then you can calculate when they should be mature. But you can't rely on this alone. Many factors play a role in the maturation of your vegetables. Variables like soil fertility, rainfall, and daytime and nighttime temperatures can all change maturation times from area to area and from year to year. Right, so days to maturity is a good guide to get you in the ballpark, but there are some subtle clues that you can learn to recognize, which will tell you that your crops are ripe and ready to be picked. First, a few basics on harvesting. Almost all vegetables are best when harvested in the morning. Overnight, they recovered from the heat of the previous day, and they're replenishing moisture and converting starches and sugars. This process makes morning harvested vegetables crisper, juicier, and sweeter. Also, avoid harvesting your vegetables when wet if possible. While a little moisture doesn't bother some veggies, it can quickly lead to rot in others. When picking your vegetables, be gentle. Bruised or damaged produce will spoil much easier. Also, be careful with the plant. Avoid breaking off stems and trampling vines. This creates a pathway for disease to enter, and you want those plants to stay healthy and keep on producing. The basic rule is, if it's not easily removed with a gentle pull or a slight twist, then use a sharp knife, scissors, or pruners. Now, most vegetables obtain their peak eating quality when allowed to ripen on the plant, but before they're done growing. Very few garden crops will continue to ripen after being picked. Hence the conundrum. Pick that watermelon too soon, it isn't going to finish ripening. Pick it too late, and it's a grainy, squishy mess with poor flavor. Most gardeners end up being guilty of leaving produce on the plant too long. Mm -hmm. right? It's still growing, so it must not be done, right? Uh, you want to target the vegetable at its peak of flavor and nutrition, and that's not always when it's at its largest size. The other mistake I see new and some experienced gardeners make is not harvesting frequently enough. All right. Now once your garden begins to produce, you can really walk through it daily and find things ready to harvest. Maybe you were thinking of putting up some of those green beans for the winter and decide to wait for all the beans to be big and plump so you can get out the canner once and be done with it. While some of the beans may be ripe, many of them by that time will be old, tough, and stringy. Another thing is that green beans like to be picked a lot. The more you pick, the more they grow. Right? So think about it from the plant's perspective. Its goal is to reproduce. So it produces flowers which are pollinated and develop into beans which are full of bean seeds. Right? By picking those young, undeveloped, and tasty bean seeds, the plant sees it as failed at reproducing and tries again, and again, and again. If the beans are left on the plant to mature, the plant successfully reproduced and has no more need to produce more blossoms and more beans. I'll be honest. Uh, my family enjoys beans, so we plant quite a few, and by the end of the season, I often, you know, forget to pick the beans just so that they'll stop producing. Yeah. So the key takeaways for general garden harvesting are harvest in the morning, keep it dry, be gentle, size doesn't matter, and harvest frequently. Now before we go, we want to give you a few specifics for a few popular vegetables to help you know what to look for. And we'll start with the favorite, tomatoes. A ripe tomato will have a full, uniform, deep color and be slightly firm and plump, but not hard when squeezed. 
The skin will be smooth and glossy and the aroma fragrant. It should pull easily from the vine. Tomatoes are one crop that will ripen after being picked. So at the end of the season and before a killing frost, bring all the mature tomatoes inside to allow them to finish ripening. Next, peppers. Bell peppers are mature when green and about the size of a baseball. Left on the vine, they'll soften and become less crisp and also sweeten, turning hues of yellow, orange, red, brown, and purple depending upon the variety. Hot peppers are also mature and can be picked any time while they're green, but left to change color, they'll get hotter. Now next we have the cucumber. Cucumbers develop quickly, so check on them daily. Like beans, if you continue picking, they'll continue producing. Whether your plan is for them in a salad or as a pickle, they should be firm, smooth, and not yellow. The smaller the cukes, the sweeter the taste. A rule of thumb for pickles is sweet pickles at one and a half to two inches and dills at three to four inches. Err on the smaller side with cukes as they can go from just right to overripe in one night. Yeah. Next is the crop which, in my opinion, has the biggest difference in taste between what comes from the garden and what comes from the store, and that's corn. Timing is everything with sweet corn. The kernels begin to lose sweetness and flavor the instant it's picked. The traditional rule is right, get a pot of water boiling and then go pick the corn. Yeah. So if you offer a sugar enhanced hybrid, they're going to stay sweet a little bit longer. Sweet corn is ready when you can feel full rounded kernels under the husk and the silk at the top begins to dry out. If you push your fingernail into a kernel, it should produce a milky rather than a clear sap. If, if the kernels are dimpled, you've passed the peak. Fresh tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and corn? Yeah, that sounds like a summer barbecue. And a barbecue wouldn't be complete without watermelon. So. You've probably heard of thumping on the watermelon to check its readiness. Now this can work, but it's really not the best indicator. When the green leafy tendrils near the stem start to dry and turn brown, you know it's ready. Or carefully lift it and look at the spot that's been resting on the ground. When ripe, it will change from pale green or white to a yellow. The skin should be hard, difficult to pierce with a fingernail. As your watermelon nears ripeness during the last week, cut down on the water to the plant and giving it just enough will prevent wilting. This will concentrate the sugars and give you a sweeter melon. There you have it. Some simple ways to ensure you're harvesting and enjoying your produce at its peak. If you have a specific veggie or fruit that you'd like to grow and we didn't cover, let us know about it by leaving a comment. Until next time, happy happy farming. Bye-bye.